Hi everybody. This is going to be a real short video compared to the last one especially. I'm just going to do one update in this method and I want to show you really quickly. I, I, I was kind of changing the uh, designer for the project editor after I did the video. I realized that little, all that space that I was using to show the uh, autofill child folders used to be a little box right here. I changed that to a, actually you click anywhere. I just kind of put that image there so you know to click it, but it's really, you can click all the way over here and it'll get rid of that. But that way, that gave me a lot more real estate here. So that way, if I create a .NET 5 project, I moved my little progress bar to here. I'm not going to do it for this project. I was just showing you that that uh, is how that, uh, why that looks like that. So that is, uh, before we go into that though, now we're going to create a new method for this project. For the datatear.net project itself. I realized after I created the table uh, user interfaces I needed to find the user interfaces for a table and we will do that. So we're going to look at the user interface and here's the fields that are in a... no I need to look at the UI field. Sorry I'm kind of just thinking out loud here. Okay so I need to find I would need to find the UI fields in the designer for the user interface selected. So to do that, we're going to need two. One, we're going to need the user interfaces for a project. We'll go ahead and do that first. That's what I was trying to think of. Sorry, my brain talking and thinking aren't my strong suit. And I should design videos before I start recording. But I'm going to do this anyway, so I figure I'll just turn on the recording. If somebody wants to watch, they can. Sometimes just talking out loud, I think better than just thinking to myself so I correct things okay so now we're gonna for the user interface I want a new method I want to say method type is find by the parameter type is going to be single field and I want to find the user interfaces ah I just realized what we don't have we don't have the project ID so we're gonna go do that first so that was my design flaw this morning so we're going to go over to SQL Server really quickly and let me go to, I'll just do it here in Query Editor and I'm just going to say alter table user interface if I could type. That doesn't have to be capital here but it looks better. Uh, add project ID int null, wait not null, sorry, there's nothing in there now. Okay, so now we have a project ID, but we have to go rebuild with datatier.net, so that field becomes available to us. So it's more uh, chicken or the egg stuff. So we are going to just build the project. Hopefully the build order doesn't... Well, we haven't executed the store procedures yet, so nothing changes until we do that. Okay, so now we've got to execute this. I'm going to just... So that's all our store procedures are now updated. So now if we go over here to, sorry, back to datatier.net and go to the user interface table, create new method, find by, single field, project ID. So now notice this method is filled in, find user interface by project ID. You could change all that if you like, but this is all set for you and we're just going to say yes we want to update on build we don't have to change any of this and um, we want to order by a single field we want to order by name so that way our list is sorted we could do it on the UI side if we wanted to also but that's fine alright next okay this is just telling us the objects we're going to update okay and then next this is the store procedure now you could update this manually and just copy the procedure and go over to SQL Server Management Studio but I am going to go ahead and just install the procedure because I trust me okay so that was our procedure we just created it was just a uh, first the first part just drops it if it already existed then the second part here actually creates the uh, so that was our uh, little store procedure we just created we can go over to SQL Server Management Studio and if I go to program it programmatic programmability sorry I can't talk this morning 
and go to store procedures, go to user interface, find by project ID. So there's our store procedure we just created. Now the other thing that just did when we go over here, that little part where we updated all the project files, I'm not going to go into here, but also that manage methods, see that little one there? I want to do that same thing for the uh, UI creator. If there's you know, already uh, some things there, I want to show like a number one, like we have uh, user. I might change that to user interfaces, but that's fine. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do this and close it. Well, we can go ahead and do it here. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to create the fields for a user interface. So we're going to do the same thing. So this is kind of just fine by, go single field, and the field is going to be user interface ID. Um, we do want an, yeah, we want an order by. We'll we'll give it a uh, single field. Um, actually, we're not going to do an order by. I'm going to change that. No order by. And the reason, well, the way I created this is by the uh, dot DTN field ID, not the field name. So we may just do the uh, field name sorting on the client. So that's that's another option. We don't have to worry about that for now. Okay, so we'll just say next. Go to confirm update. Go to next and create our store procedure. Do the same thing. Okay, so now we have our store procedures created. I'll... And, yeah, we have one here too. So both of these fields, this field and this field, have a custom method now. Okay, now what we're going to do is go over to datatier.net and make sure we still compile. It's always very important to still compile the tool we're using. Okay, that's... Um, I'm still more, I'm confident I've used this thing for so many years, but I still always get this. When I work on this project is where I'm the most worried because something goes wrong. Fixing it is a, I got to manually do a lot of stuff, but things have been working pretty well lately. So we've got, now we have our two new methods created. The other thing we can do, I'm not going to actually call it now, but if you look at our gateway method, we added a method to the gateway. And this is the last thing I'm going to show you because this is all I'm going to do in this video. But we added methods for, and notice all the methods in the gateway are sorted alphabetically just like my little tool regionizer because I'm a, you know, regionaholic. Hi, Corby. I don't go to meetings though, so they kick me out. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, find user interface. We should have it by now somewhere in here. Here it is, find UI field by user interface ID. And then the other one is find um, user interface by project ID. So our methods are here. And all this is is we create a temp instance of the user interface object. And we set a property of find by project ID. And here's the, you know, we set the project ID. And then we call this method the find user interface, which is code generated. It's just the default find user interface, but we're not passing in a primary key. We're passing in this temp user interface object. And in case you're curious, the very last thing I'll show you of how that knows to call what store procedure, that happens over here in the, uh, let me see where it's going to be in the uh, writer. Let me find the user interface writer. And I'll just, this is where the store procedure parameters are created. Uh, that's fine. Go to one of these. Okay, and this is a. It's in the. These are in the methods. This is part of the. It's called the application logic component. And this is the class that, if I had it to do over again, I would have probably put all this logic in the data access component. But it is what it is at this point. I could. I'm. I'm, I'm considering doing some changes, but I'm. I want to do this UI generator first because. I don't really want to start refactoring it yet. Um, so now that's how it, uh, here's the way it says um, we get our writer. Here's here's where it creates the store procedure. Let me go to this. That's not for delete, we're doing a bad one. Let's go to the, the find user interface. 
Okay. Here's where it creates the uh, store procedure. And then here, there's code. This is that, when we do that little thing, it says confirm update. It comes through here and writes this code here that says, if it's a find by project ID, which is the one we, we just code generated all this when we added that method, it'll say, uh, it changes the store procedure name and we create the SQL parameter, the project ID, and we pass that in. Otherwise, it creates the primary key parameter, which is just go to that. And that's all I'm going to show. So anywhere in your client, you could then say, once you have an instance of the gateway, you know, you can just say gateway dot, uh, sorry, whatever these methods are, gateway dot find user interface by project ID. And to me, that's just simpler than Lambda expressions, especially if you're dealing with junior developers. I've had some that I've, I can just give them this and say, call this method, you know, and you load your object. You don't have to, you know, I mean, Lambda expressions aren't that hard and almost anybody can figure them out pretty quickly, but it's still easier to me to say gateway.findUserInterface by project ID than, you know, writing a Lambda expression. I'm not even going to go into, but anyway, all right, thanks for watching and peace out.